Let's take a look at democracy's scorecard. For the past 50 years, we have experienced a dissatisfaction with the slow growth of real wages. In Western Europe in particular, unemployment rates have been exceptionally high. That has been the case even in periods of economic booms, and young people suffer the most. Public debts have risen everywhere to astronomical heights in the 21st century, especially since 2020. In many cases, it approaches and even exceeds a country's annual GDP. State-controlled social security systems are heading toward insolvency. What about the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 and the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991? Were those not triumphs of democracy? No, not really. They showed the bankruptcy of the idea of socialism. Wilson's multicultural democratic creations, Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia, are gone. In the U.S., a century of democracy has led to increasing moral degeneration. Family and social disintegration is evident. Cultural decay has led to unprecedented rates of divorce and illegitimacy. More than 63 million Americans have died from legalized abortion since Roe v. Wade. Everywhere we look, we see lawlessness and crime. Every nook and cranny of life is affected by state management and forced integration. Social strife, cultural divisions, racial hostility, ethnic tensions, moral divides. They are the result of an ever-expanding list of multicultural and egalitarian policies. Fundamental doubts concerning the virtues of the progressivist system have resurfaced. With so many movies about time travel in the multiverse, one wonders, what would have happened if Wilson had kept the US out of World War I? If America had followed a non-interventionist foreign policy, it is likely that the intra-European conflict would have ended in 1917, probably with a mutually acceptable and face-saving compromise peace rather than dictate. Consequently, Austria-Hungary, Germany, and Russia would have remained monarchies. The Russians would have crowned another Tsar, and it would have been almost impossible for the Bolsheviks to seize power. With a German Kaiser and an Austrian Emperor in place, and without the need to react to a communist threat in Western Europe, it would have been just as hard for the fascists and the Nazi to rise. Millions of victims of both Marxist and National Socialism would have been saved. Without Wilson, there would have been no World War II. The extent of government interference with the private economy in the US and Western Europe would never have reached the heights of today. Half of the globe would not have fallen into communist hands. Those people would not have been plundered, devastated, and forcibly insulated from Western culture and global markets for decades. Humanity would have remained integrated economically, as in the 19th century, in a worldwide system of division of labor and cooperation. Living standards would have grown much higher. Thus, Wilson's legacy is nothing short of an unmitigated disaster. We need to take a systematic look at the historic transformation from monarchy to democracy. On this journey, we examine the core beliefs and common myths concerning modern history. We apply the standard economic tools analyzing human action in the marketplace versus politics. Let's begin by using basic theoretical insights regarding the nature of private property and ownership versus public property and administration.